Hi, welcome to Code Conversations. We're talking to Mads Christensen. What are you going to show us today, Mads? Well, I was thinking of showing a Visual Studio extension for compiling less files into CSS. Great. Yep. So uh, let's take a look. All right. So this is an extension called something as fancy as Less Compiler. And it does exactly that. It compiles less files into CSS. So here I have a project that has two less files. And uh, the first thing that you'll notice when you open a less file, when you have this extension installed, is this little thing that shows up down in the corner of your editor. And it tells you whether or not the less compiler is on. Because the cool thing is that by default, the less compiler is off. And you have to, when you open a less file, you have to say, hey, in this project, I want the compiler to compile my less files. Because you know it could be that you had another extension for compiling uh, less files for certain projects. Or you, maybe you used Gulp or Grunt or Webpack right, or something. Right? Okay. So we can't just be on all the time. But it's really as simple as um, just enabling it by clicking this very um, uh, little adornment down here in the corner. So when it's enabled and I save a less file, it will produce a CSS file and a min file right here. So this is the way I see this is that it's in between two other extensions that in the past have been doing uh, less compilation. And some people like the one of the extensions, and some people like the other. And I'm talking about Web Essentials mm -hmm. as being one of them, which automatically just compiles less files. You don't have to do any setup. Uh, just like right here, except that you just turn it on for, for the individual project, right? Okay. And then you get the same behavior. Other people like one called Web Compiler, mm -hmm. which gives you a compiler configuration file at the root of your project. Here you don't need that. Instead, you see these comments that are up here in the top of my ah. screen. I don't have to have these comments. If I don't have a comment like this, I just get the defaults, which is probably what most people will do. But I can actually control the less compiler. And so as we'll look in the code here in a second, it's, it's actually the node module, the official less compiler node module that's being run here. So it's the exact same attributes or, or parameters we can give the compiler as if we ran it on the command line as we can do in here. Um, so that's very, very cool. Um, we can cool. even say that, hey, don't compile this particular file uh -huh. uh, by giving it a no compile comment like this. A and a lot of other things. And it's all documented um, on the Let's Compile a GitHub repository here where you see um, you can see all the different flags, all the different things you can do. OK, so this is a Visual Studio extension. You've published this code out on GitHub. Uh -huh. Other people can look at this both to, to see how this specific one works, but also they could write their own extension. They could learn from what yes. you're doing there. Especially the part where um, the first thing I'm going to show here. Let's actually look at the code. Mm -hmm. And so there's a part here that I think is kind of interesting. And that is, how do you run Node.js inside a Visual Studio extension? without the user uh, noticing, basically, right? Making a sort of a natural part of it. And so if we take a look at the extension um, project, we can see that we have a less compiler package file. And in this case, it contains two different classes. It contains a less compiler package and an M NPM installer package, OK? The NPM installer package loads automatically. So that's what this line here says. It says, provide autoload for when there's no solution. OK. So basically what that means is whether or not there's a solution open, uh -huh. always load this extension. Now, that's usually a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> but in this case, it's actually not, because we're using an async package, and we're telling it to load in the background. So that means it's completely async right? and, and running from a, on a different thread. So there is no uh, issues with uh, startup performance or anything like that. And what it does is that it calls into a node process class that I have. And if we go take a look at that, we ask it, is ready to execute? So basically, what it does is that it figures out how to, what packages to install, NPM packages to install, and then whether or not they have succeeded installing or not. So it looks for the existence of an executable. And that is the less compiler CMD file right here. So that's a node module that's being installed into the temp directory. Uh, so you, you know the user doesn't have to care about any of this. Mm -hmm. um, so if this returns and says, hey, there is no, um, uh, you know, this, if it's not ready to execute, meaning, hey, I couldn't find the executable, that mm -hmm. means that the node modules have not been installed yet. 
Then it calls a node process, process and says, hey, OK, make sure to install everything. And so it goes in, creates directories, um, and it calls NPM on the packages here. So it's installed less and auto prefixer and CSS comb NPM modules. So it does all this asynchronously by shelling out to Node.js uh, behind the scene. You don't have to have Node.js installed in Visual Studio to do this trick because Visual Studio ships with it uh, already. And so um, that's what happens in here. We basically go. So you're not having to wire up all the stuff of hosting Node. It's uh, like it's right. already shipped with it. I don't. Okay. My extension doesn't have to ship Node Exe. Yeah. Example, which is really nice. It, it makes things a lot easier. All I do is that I, I tell the shell command where Node exists inside the Visual Studio install directory, and I do that in this uh, little method right here. Cool. So that's very nice. So. You know, the first time you install this extension and open Visual Studio, it will install the node module. So now you're ready to go, right? And it does all that in the background. Um, wow. So I think, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Can you show us that repository one more time? Oh, sure. So, okay, so people can go and get this out on, on your repository, and we'll have a link to that in the, in the show notes as well. Yeah. So, awesome. All right, well, thanks a bunch.